Before I became a Muslim, I was not a very conservative person. I was not, I was not a very good person. Uh, I modeled for Playboy. I did that for about five years, and during that time, um, I, I did a lot of drugs. And I thought, oh, I can do meth, and I won't get addicted because I'm just using it as a as a weight loss helper, and you know, I I'll just use it every once in a while to just keep myself from eating so much. Yeah, right. I thought I was strong enough to not get addicted to a drug that absolutely addicts basically everyone who uses it. So I started doing meth, and I would probably give it a couple weeks, and then I got really addicted to it, and I did it all day and all night for five years, and. It really brought me to a place of complete rock bottom. And my husband at that time had been doing it with me and he started getting violent with me and I was afraid for my life. So uh, I decided to quit. I decided that that's not what I wanted for my life. And I told him, I said, I'm going to quit. And he laughed at me and he said, yeah, right, you're not going to quit. And I said, you know what, I'm going to quit. I quit that day cold turkey never again look back. I didn't have any type of rehab, no outside help, no support system. I had my husband laughing at me and trying to get me to do it again. After that, I had my little boy. My whole focus on life kind of changed. I, I had this wonderful little boy who needed a good mother and I, I loved him so much I wanted to change everything that I focused on for him. All right, guess what's going to happen? The train's going to take off. Look at that plane! Back in the day, I could do anything I wanted. I, w I was very involved in basically the Hollywood scene that anybody would want to be involved in. A lot of people are surprised that I gave that up in order to become a Muslim. But the funny thing is, is, is when I said my Shahada, the desire to do all those things was completely taken away from me. I used to drink, did drugs, you know, all that stuff. I don't want to do them anymore. It's amazing to me that I, I really enjoy and feel peaceful in my heart about being a Muslim. I was born and raised uh, non-denominational, charismatic, born-again Christian, and I didn't find answers for what I was looking for for 31 years as a Christian. I never really felt God. I tried as hard as I could. I really did, and I never felt Him. The whole thing that started leading me to Islam was uh, I got married to an Iranian man who was a very devout, born-again, charismatic, non-denominational Christian. And he was, he was mentally and emotionally abusive to me, and not to mention the fact that he was poisoning me uh, just so that he could control me. He wanted to keep me at home, not able to leave the house, just so he knew where I was at all times. So I left him, and um, that kind of started me on a whole new journey to seek what was really, truly going on in the world. My name is Muhammad Faqih, and I'm the Imam uh, and the Religious Director of the Islamic Institute of Orange County. I uh, became the Imam here in 2006, and I have been uh, serving in that role uh, ever since. Uh, our community is very uh, uh, diverse. We have so many uh, you know, people uh, who represent pretty much uh, a very wide uh, ethnic uh, group. So we have uh, immigrants and we have indigenous um, you know, people. We have uh, uh, you know, Arabs, non-Arabs, uh, and even the Arabs are you know, from a, a wide range of places. Recently, we have been having a very interesting uh, increase in the number of people who become Muslim. One to two individuals a week become Muslim since the beginning of the year. This is this year. This is not every year, but this year. This inc inc increased wave of uh, hate and bigotry uh, against Muslims uh, is actually causing more people to investigate and learn about Islam. And many of them, you know, end up choosing you know, 
Islam as, as their way of life. I researched Islam for a while before I chose to convert. Um, basically, I wanted to know why people hated Muslims so much because, you know, I saw what I saw on the news. I saw the oppression and the violence and I wanted to know what really existed and if that was the way that Islam was. So I started researching it and the more and more I researched it, the deeper I got into it, I saw, I saw the truth in it. I think the main thing that I liked about Islam was the respect for women. There is, there is a large amount of respect for women and the things that we do as women. Our lives aren't easy. We have a lot of things that we have to think and worry about. Our families, our husbands, our children. I mean, we have to bear children. That's a really hard thing to go through. And, you know, a lot of us have to cook and clean and work and raise children and take care of, you know, the house and our husband. It's, it's a difficult job. And the fact that Islam respects women for that and, you know, they separate us, they separate us at mosques so that the men aren't distracted by us because they understand, Islam understands the power that we have behind our, well, I guess you could say our sexuality, the way that we look is powerful to men and they're affected by it. And Islam respects that. Once I realized that, it really just, it grabbed a hold of me and that's when I knew I wanted to become a Muslim. How many Frankies do you have? Hmm. One, two, three. Converting to Islam made me feel different. It made me feel absolutely peaceful. It, uh, it took away, I, I felt unstable before. I felt like a lot of things in my life were, were just up and down. And there was a lot of things that were up and down because they hadn't been decided on. There was no, there was no, goal in mind. There was no reasoning for me being here. There, you know, I didn't know why I should be here. And converting to Islam gave me the peace and the security and the, just the balance that I needed in my life. It made everything make sense. It made everything real. And it made everything worth being here for because I finally have a purpose and I understand what it is. We don't always have the opportunity to meet people that we essentially need to meet in order to understand them. So I started going to mosques in order to really get close to the people and understand them. And the more I got involved in the mosque, the more the women just surrounded me and took me in. And they've really shown me the kindness that is Islam. I never, ever, 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 ever in my life would have would have ever thought that I'd become a Muslim ever never ever my my perception of them was so misconceived that I didn't like them because I believed media and I thought that they were bad and never in a million years would I have thought that one day I'd be one of them but now that I am I am so proud. I am so happy. I, I want to wear hijab because I want people to know that I'm Muslim. Even if they hate me, I don't care. I want to show them that Allah exists in any kind of person, not just Middle Eastern. I played drums before I was Muslim and just because I became a Muslim doesn't mean I have to stop doing the things that I enjoy. I do a lot of sports snowboarding, wakeboarding, you can do all those things and still be a good Muslim and still wear hijab. My dad never really knew about my past with the drugs and the playboy modeling and all that stuff. He and I didn't speak for eight years. He kicked me out of the house when I was 17 years old and I lived under a freeway overpass for a week. I was homeless and all I had with me was what I could fit into my backpack and my bass guitar. So. We didn't speak for eight years after that, and he didn't understand or wouldn't have understood is that these are experiences that I needed to have on my own. I needed to, to 
have the pain on my own and I needed to have the recovery on my own. The only reason why I started speaking to him again was because I got pregnant with my son and I, I figured that my son needed a grandfather. When I did come back and finally start speaking to him again, we had a, a beautiful conversation together and we discussed what had happened before and we both apologized to each other and promised to never do it again. So. This is my daddy. And he's my best friend in the whole wide world. And that's something I never thought was going to happen. But now that it has, I love him so much. The first time my dad learned about my conversion, I was on my way home from Sacramento. I had just gone to a mosque up there and converted. And I was, I was driving home and I was too afraid to call him because I knew he was going to be really mad. So I, I texted him on the phone and I said, Dad, can you please try to start having an open mind about Muslims? Can you please start just not being so judgmental and believing everything you see on the news? And he texted me back and said, why? So I said, well, Dad, um, I'm Muslim. My, my father was not too pleased when he found out that I converted to Islam. He was quite unhappy uh, to the point where I, I feared that I was going to have to leave. We, we live in the same home and we work at the same job and I haven't gone back to the job since. But living at home has been very tense. He's, he's been very, uh, very confrontational about it at times. Wow. Another text from my dad trying to protect me, which I understand. Um, he's definitely misinformed as to what is going on with Islam. He says that if I ever change my mind and decide to leave Islam, that the Muslims will threaten and kill me and my dad and my son. Basically, it's all him trying to protect me and asking me to be careful and trying to show me what the real side of Islam is about, but the problem is, is he doesn't know what the real side is because he's not involved in it. Once you become involved in Islam, the true and correct and pure Islam, you understand what the truth is. He's reaching the point now, I've, I've had conversations with him about it, trying to show him what true Islam is, and it's not what he's seen on the news, it's not what he thinks it is. So I've been working with him, trying to show it to him piece by piece, and he's now finally starting to, he's finally starting to come around and, and have some acceptance towards me about it. I'm really looking forward to